forgot to mention at the very beginning, prayer team, if you would just make your way to the side. Oh, you did already. Oh, you're good. Anytime during the service, anytime that they're up here and you want prayer with them, come on. We're here to pray together. Ah, Fear, you are a liar. We speak to you in this place and we tell you, you have no place here. told you you're not good enough when he told you you're not right when he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight when he told you you're not worthy when he told you you're not loved when he told you you're not beautiful that you'll never be enough oh fear He will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Fear, he is a liar. He will rob your rest, steal your happiness, or cast your fear in the fire. Cause fear, he is a liar. When he told you you were troubled, that you'd never be alone. When he told you you should run away, that you'll never find a home. When he told you you were dirty, and that you should be ashamed. When he told you you could be the one that grace could never change. Oh, fear, he is a liar. He will take your breath, stop you in your steps. Fear, he is a liar. He will rob your Let your fire fall and cast out all. Yes. Let your fire fall, your love is all I do. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all I do.
I know we're not done with the worship yet, but the story of that song, correct me if I'm wrong. You gotta understand something. When we sing it as well with our soul, does not mean that our circumstances are well. We're not talking about circumstances here, outside circumstances. We're talking about inner soul condition. The writer of the song went overseas and his family came later. And as they were coming, this is back many, many years ago, and the, the ship went down with his wife and his children. Lost him. And later, when it was time for him to return back to the United States, the ship made the same route, took the same route. When they got to the spot where that ship went down, He was inspired to write that song. His heart was broken, but his soul was good. His emotions were wreaking havoc, but he was at peace deep down inside. Part of his emotional being was down in the ocean with his family but he was a Christian he knew Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior the one that we just sang about the waves and wind still know his name and he wrote this song I want to sing that chorus over again back back where it where it says it is well with my soul it is well with my soul as we sing it I want you to picture what that man pictured or maybe a similar situation in your maybe you haven't lost a family member to a ship going down maybe maybe you've got a storm brewing in your life but you know Jesus And I want to tell you, if you know Jesus, you're going to be okay. You're going to make it. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Not your circumstances. Your circumstances don't have the last word. God and his word has the last word. So let's focus on him. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. So let your soul sing it. Come on now. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is well with my soul. Confess the positive confession with With my soul. Don't be led astray with your emotions. Confess it. It is well. God's word is true with with my soul.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory. And bear my shame. The cross is spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my Lord. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on.
time we confess that all the time 
may that sink down deep in our spirits. And when we do, Father, when we get that, when we finally get that, we realize all our fears disappear. Our insecurities fade away. (laughs) And we find that you're bigger and better than we ever imagined you to be. Bigger and better. And we thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your love and for all that that brings to us. We thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Praise the Lord. Whew. I tell you what, that is so awesome. That is so awesome. I just, I just feel so peaceful. <laughs> I feel so peaceful, and that's good because I'm preaching on peace today, so it's good to feel that way. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to call the ushers down at this time to receive tithes and offerings. And, and uh, as we give to him, we're not just giving to pay the light bill or the heat bill for the church, although I'm sure you appreciate that on days like today. But we're giving to God. The primary motive of our hearts is to, because we love God and we're giving, we're giving to him, not because he's a poor God and needs the money. He's already got all the money in the world, in the universe, whatever. Okay, he's not a poor God. But he wants us to give to him, to let, to, to let him know that we know who's in charge. Okay, he's our financial money manager and not the world. Great and wonderful, Lord God. Father, we just praise you with every ounce of our being, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you've given us. And Father, we ask for your blessings upon the gifts of our tithes and offerings this morning. Yes. And please bless the hands so, so cheerfully and wonderfully given. Mm-hmm. We give you all the praise and glory. We ask yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. All right. Draw your attention up there for the video announcements. The children and youth participating in the Christmas play will be staying after church until 3 o'clock today and next Sunday for dress rehearsal. See Casey Wills if you have questions. All those going to Christmas at our house, remember, it is this Thursday. If you would like to ride on the bus or caravan over, the group will leave GCF at 530. If you're not here, we will meet you there. Then coming up this Saturday is men's prayer breakfast at 7 o'clock. Be sure to put on your calendar the children and youth play Wednesday, December 19th at 6.30. The adult program this year will be Sunday, December 23rd at 10.30. Hopefully by then, we will have shared some answers in The Search and wrap it up in a pretty bow. This Sunday, we take a look at The Search for Peace. Am I on? Hello? Okay. Am I on? Yes. Okay. Uh, correction on um, the men's breakfast is seven, not six thirty. Okay, we got a lot of things going on around here at six thirty. But the men's breakfast is Saturday morning at seven o'clock. Okay, praise the Lord. Kids, come on down. I want to meet with you down here. Come on, Ellie. <laughs> Woo! How are you, girl? Good. All right. <laughs> I'll take all those hugs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're in the Christmas season. Are you excited about Christmas? Yeah. Why are you excited about Christmas? I'm really excited. Because? Celebrate Jesus. Jesus' birthday. That's right. That's right. And I bet you there's probably another reason too, right? Yeah. Okay. I was wondering how long it's going to take. All right. Well, it's okay to be excited about that. You know, about presents. Who doesn't get excited about gifts and presents? But we need to be the most excited about Jesus. And I want to tell you, uh, part of the Christmas story, before Jesus was born, when Mary, when Mary got pregnant, okay, that means she got pregnant with a child, with Jesus, okay, but before then, she was in her home, and an angel showed up. Now, if you were in your home and an angel showed up, how would you react? Huh? What would you think about it? If you saw an angel all of a sudden just showed up right here, what would you think? Huh? 
praise him? Well, you probably would. Most of us. Go ahead. I would feel happy. You would feel happy? I would hug him. You would hug him. These are all great. But you know what? I think most of us would get scared out of our skin. Okay? I'm going to be real honest here. The kids probably would just get it, right? Adults, uh, we're a little slow to catch on sometimes. But the angel showed up at Mary, at Mary's house, and he says, You're, you know, don't be afraid, Mary. He had to say that because Mary had some fear. You know, to see an angel show up all of a sudden. I think at first we might be afraid, but then we'd say, oh, this is, this is cool. This is cool. What's going on here? And then he, he told Mary, don't be afraid because you're going to be you're going to carry the Christ child. You're going to get pregnant with Jesus, and he's going to be, he's going to be, you're going to be the mother. And how amazing is that? That would be awesome, right? Okay. So, so just know that when we read in the, in, the, in, the, in the Christmas story, there's four different places where the angel said, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Okay. So what is the lesson we should carry from this? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> we should not be afraid because Jesus is with us. I'm talking about the star or the Christmas story? I'm talking about the Christmas story. When the angel showed up before, G- before Mary got pregnant, and then the angel was telling her that. And so that is awesome, okay? So, so let me just tell you, let me just tell you, don't be afraid because Jesus is with you. God's going to take care of everything, okay? Just keep your eyes on him, all right? Everybody bow your heads, close your eyes, okay? As I pray for you. Lord, I bless these children, and I thank you, Lord. I, I cast out all fear in Jesus' name, and I speak peace. I speak love. I speak the fullness of your spirit. I speak their callings into existence, Father, that you have placed in them. I call forth pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, uh, Christian moms and dads and and, uh, and businessmen and women. And Father, I just pray that you, they will fulfill their calling according to the gifts you've put within them, Lord, and they will discover this early on. Just lead them and guide them and bless them and all those that work with them every week, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can go downstairs now. All right, Billy, where are you? Come on, Billy. Billy. Yay, Billy. Oh, let me get a mic. This would be helpful. I asked Billy to share something that he shared uh, yesterday with Pam and I. Uh, yesterday was bread shed, and, and uh, we, we, we fed, gave out food to a record number yesterday, 383 families. Were, were, were served food yesterday, and uh, I, I, Billy shared his reaction to that, so Billy, go ahead. As cold as it was yesterday, <laughs> we pushed through, and, and the feeling you get after doing that, it's, it's so amazing. It's, I mean, I love being sober, and I love following Christ, but it, it really makes me want to, I told him yesterday, it made me want to cl- climb on top of a mountain and just scream out. You know, <laughs> and honestly, this praise and worship we have, yes. it, it, it makes me feel the same way. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Billy. When you're serving the Lord, it's good to feel good about it, right? Okay, you're doing it out of the, if you feel good, even if it's cold and whatever you're doing, you know, it's because you know you've got the right motive when you just, just enjoy doing what you're doing, serving people, and in so doing, you're serving Jesus. Yes, all the all the uh, the Crossroads guys get their uh, their assignment every every month is to carry the boxes to the to the cars or even sometimes over to apartments that are close by to the people the the carriers and uh, and sometimes they weigh up because they got some heavy stuff in it. But uh, anyway, but uh, we just appreciate uh, all those. Um, our church does support uh, monthly uh, the Breadshed Ministry, and we thank you for um, uh, all of you that that have come and helped out. Um, uh, down there because it is such a viable, viable ministry, and uh, we praise God uh, for that. Okay, so um, peace. Peace is elusive to a lot of people. You know, we've we've got we've we've got a lot of things that go on inside of us, 
And you're probably wondering what this box is up here. And if you are wondering, that's good. I want you to wonder, okay? Just continue to wonder. <laughs> uh, go ahead and put the first slide up. Let me get my little flicker here, and then I'll get her, get her going. And, um, and uh, get it going here. When we think of the word peace... We usually think of some passive thing, okay? Some, 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 some passive thing that, that uh, where there's an absence of conflict or, or, uh, or stress or we're free from strife of any kind whatsoever. Well, you may be surprised. I know that's, that's what first comes to our mind, and, that, and that's part of what peace is. But there's more to peace than that. And you may be surprised to know there are several different shades of meaning of, of peace and the Hebrew word for peace is the word salom or shalom. Same, same thing, interchangeable. And it includes four different aspects of peace. All right, now I'm not going to talk about all these aspects. I just want, want, you, want you to be aware of what they are. Number one, wholeness of body or health. Okay, shalom can mean that in Hebrew. Uh, harmony between two parties or people. Okay. Prosperity, success, or fulfillment. And then lastly, victory over one's enemies or absence of war. Okay? Victory over one's enemies or absence of war. Those are, those are four shades of meaning that shalom makes up. In the New Testament, um, the word is, and I'm going to mess this up, but who cares, uh, irene, okay, is used, and its meaning comes from shalom, okay, and includes the ideas of harmony, tranquility, safety, Lack of strife. Okay, now, that's, that's just for your, no extra charge for that. It's just for your uh, additional information, okay? But what we're going to do is today we're going to take a very a look at a very specific use of the word peace in Scripture that I believe hits the bullseye in our everyday life. In fact, I believe that this brand of peace that, we're, that I'm going to be talking about and we're going to be looking at um, affects all other aspects of peace in a profound way. I believe it's the, the foundation of every other form of peace. Uh, we're talking about peace of heart and of mind. Peace of heart and mind. It, it's, it's an absence of war inside you. It's a harmony between your thoughts, your feelings, and actions. It's a true sense of wholeness. Now, you may ask, rightly so, is this really possible <laughs> in the day and age that we live in here? You know, the world's crazy. The world's going just nuts. Is this possible? And I'm going to say yes, as you probably would expect me to say. Yes, because the scripture says yes, it's possible. It's not easy because there's a war raging inside of us. We're not saying it's easy, but, but it is possible. And, 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 and it's a war between you and the devil and your mind and your emotions. And, and, and God gives us the power to, to, to take care of all this, but we gotta, we gotta understand what's going on first, okay? There's a war. We need to, and God wants us to win this war every single time. And we have the possibility within us through Jesus and through the promise of scripture of God's word, that we can have victory every single time the war begins to rage, we can have peace of mind, okay? So here, there's some things that we got we to gotta look at, all right? At first, we must understand that one of the major weapons Satan uses to keep us from enjoying peace of mind and peace of heart is fear. And I want you to know fear has children, the children of fear are worry, anxiety, and insecurity, just to name three. Okay? Worry, anxiety, and insecurity. But it all stems from fear in one form or another. Now, I have come to believe that our inner fears, I've come to believe this, that our inner fears are our greatest enemy to inner peace. How do I know this? Well, personal experience, number one. Okay, number two, encountered many, many people over the years in, in 40 plus years of ministry, talked with and walked through and counseled and prayed with countless people 
that are wrestling with, with all these kinds of fears, okay? And I, I'm here to tell you that fear is the basis of almost every single problem a human being faces. Almost every single problem. Now, I know pride, pride is, is, is in there too, but pride, you know, uses fear to, 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 to wreak havoc in our lives. So, um, so I'm, I'm going to show you, share with you some examples of this, okay? Um, uh, I came across all kinds of stuff. I, I, in fact, I did. I did. I spent too much time on the internet. Okay, I'll just be honest with you, uh, uh, researching this because there's a lot of stuff out there about fears and anxiety and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I got a. I, I copied off uh, <laughs> uh, phobias. Okay, now, I've shared phobias before. I'm not going to sh- share those today. But, but uh, the 100 top phobias. So there's a whole lot more than 100. These are just the 100 top ones, the phobias. And there are some crazy ones out there, but they're not crazy if you've got it, okay? Uh, And to be just uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I wrestle with claustrophobia, okay? Anybody in here with me on that one, okay? It's fear of small places and like you're feeling trapped, you can't get out, or maybe the possibility exists, you won't be able to get out. And it's, it's crazy, and I hate to even admit that because the pastor should not have any fear. Well, I, I wrestle with it. And I'm better than I used to be. I really am. But I still have those occasions, okay? So, so they're very real. You know, it's, so for somebody who doesn't have claustrophobia, it's a silly. It's a small space. What's, what's, what's up with that? But if you got it, it's a real deal, okay? And so we all wrestle with stuff. We all wrestle with stuff, and I know you got your stuff too, okay? Because you're a human being, all right? And so we wrestle with these. So I, 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 I got on some, some surveys and uh, see what some uh, statistics were on some things. And there's a bunch of them out there. But there's a Google survey where a survey company used Google's autocomplete feature. You know what that is, right? You go to Google something, you'll type in a couple words, and they'll come up with a list of what it thinks you might want to know where you might want to go, okay? And uh, the autocomplete feature to come up with, um, with, a, with a top fears or phobias in every state in the United States, okay? So each state has its, has its, has its thing, okay? The greatest fears in that particular state. Now, some states, you know, uh, have some... Uh, same fear as another state or whatever. And this is the top ones that are Googled, okay? Just get that, okay? So my home state of New York, I said, well, I wonder what, what's up with New York. New York State, vehophobia. Anybody know what that is? Me neither. Fear of driving. Fear of driving. It's a persistent, overpowering fear of driving. And you know what the what the... Another statistic is about New York State, it has per capita, it's got the highest percentage of unlicensed drivers. People driving around without a license, okay? So I don't know how that works in, but I just throw that out there. Texas, okay? My family and I lived down there for 11 and a half years. It's panophobia. Panophobia. It's not the fear of... Pots and pans, okay? <laughs> this is crazy. It's the fear of everything. Yeah, the fear of everything. It's a generalized, lingering fear that's, that something bad is about to happen. All right? Something bad is about to happen. I don't care how good it looks, something bad is about to happen. Boy, what a prison that would be. I'm glad we don't live there anymore. Okay. <laughs> Literally. Okay. So, how about Missouri, huh? Yeah, that's what we're all waiting for. It's gamophobia. Yeah. Gamophobia. The fear of commitment. Mhm. The fear of commitment. It's overwhelming fear of long-term obligations or marriage. That's the number one Googled fear in the state of Missouri. Now, I, we could go on and on and on, all 50 states. Not going to do that because who cares, okay? So my own Google survey, though, I did a little Google thing myself, all right? It's quite by accident, but I thought, hey, this is cool. I'm going to share this. 
I was going to, I, I know there's fear knots in the Christmas story, so, so, I, so just to save time, I Googled, you know, the fear knots. And before I had a chance to finish it, you know, had this list come up, okay? The first one listed was the fear knots of the Bible, okay? And so, um, you know, that has, but there was nine other ones underneath that. The fear of not being good enough. That's what people are Googling across the country. The fear of not being loved. See, the autocorrect was filling in the blanks here for, uh, according to how many people have Googled these things. The fear of not knowing. The fear of not being able to move. The fear of not being enough. The fear of not being able to breathe. The fear of not being liked. The fear of not being accepted. A lot of us can relate to a lot of these. Well, here's the last one, and I thought this was really, it really shocked me, to be honest with you. Okay? I, I said, really? The fear of not existing. Now, you're Googling this thing, and you're Googling the fear of not existing. What, what's up with that? A lot of people feel like they don't exist. You know? So all I'm saying is, there's a plethora, Don Faust, a plethora, <laughs> he likes to use that word a lot, of, of ways and means that, to cause fear. And Satan is really good at this thing. And he's, he, he knows how to work it. He knows, how to, he knows where you're weak, you know, and he's going he's gonna to try to stick it to you wherever he can when it comes to fear because, you know, fear taken to his extreme is paralyzing. We're paralyzed. According to an article in Mental Health, Mental Health Magazine, it stated that anxiety disorders are the most common mental health illness in the United States because it leads to so many other things. All of us deal with anxiety to some degree, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to word this in a worldly sense. It's normal to have certain fears and, and, and concerns, okay? Now, is it really normal for a Christian? Well, we'll, we'll talk about that. But, but everybody has certain fears and little anxieties and everything. According to Johns Hopkins Health Alert, general worriers tend to spend an average of 55 minutes a day worrying. That's the general population, okay? While people with general anxiety disorder, GAD, as it's abbreviated, spend over 300 minutes a day worrying. That's over five times as much, okay? 55 for the regular population, 300 minutes for those with general anxiety disorder. Now, according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, 40 million Americans over the age of 18 are affected by anxiety. And I, when, when I say affected, it's, it causes disturbance in their life on a regular basis. And that's roughly 18% of our population. 18%. So let's say our average attendance here at Grace is 200 people. That would be... If, if we're, I'm not saying this is accurate necessarily for our church, but 200 people, 36 people in our congregation would be wrestling with it on a regular basis to the to part it affects their lives um, and curtails uh, some normal activity at times. Okay, so, so I'm not saying that. If you're, if you're one of the 36, then we got answers. Jesus is our answer. We're going to talk about some of those things. But I'm, I'm just trying to paint a real picture for you. This is a very real deal. <clears throat> and and uh, about the time we think we don't have it, it sneaks up on us and, 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 and bites us, okay? So, now, it might be comforting to know, as I already referred, that there are some examples in Scripture, many examples, actually, of people who were afraid that God had to come and quell the storm of fear in their lives. And uh, anxiety showed up in the Christmas story at least four times. Uh, in Zechariah, in Luke chapter 1, we're not going to turn there, uh, we got we got another scripture we're going to be turning to here in a minute. Several actually, uh, Zechariah and Luke chapter one, the Virgin Mary and Luke chapter one. Later on in that same chapter, 
And then Joseph in Matthew chapter 1, remember Mary got pregnant and not, he had to decide what to do, and he was afraid at first, but the angel had to come and say, don't be afraid. And then the shepherds in Luke 2, you know, angel, whole host of angels appeared to them and, you know, showed up and gave them a fright. Okay, so, so, so we've got plenty of company here. <clears throat> now, I got here in this box something that is, that is one of the greatest fears of most people, okay? It's... It's, it's, it's unpredictable. I'm a, I need a volunteer. Uh, Jakeem, would you come on, help, help me? Come on up here. Come on, stand right back here, okay? <clears throat> Are you afraid of anything? Uh, not, anymore. not anymore. Okay, he's a cool dude, man. I ain't afraid of nothing. Okay, and um, appreciate your help. Okay, but in this box, Jakeem, I want to warn you, okay? Okay. Um, Uh, you don't have to be afraid what's in there, but, but you, you need to be cautious, okay? Be, be cautious, because um, this thing that's in this box is, can be friendly one minute, but can attack you the next. Okay, well, it might be, you never know. Okay, it's very unpredictable, very unpredictable. <laughs> Watch it, man, get away, get away, man. What are you doing? Okay. It's, it's very, very unpredictable, okay? And it, it, and it can turn on you any minute, and you can be, it can be really um, nice to get along with and all this kind of stuff, and then next minute it can, it can attack, okay? It can attack. Very, very unpredictable. And uh, a lot of people, this is one of the greatest fears of any human being that's in this box, and I'm just wondering, do you want to open it up and see what's in there? Huh? Huh? Well, you'd be careful now. What I would I would caution you. Be careful. All right. There you go. Okay, now okay. I got the ropes on so it wouldn't Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. What Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is it? It's, me. it's who? It's mirror. Wake it up. Show everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a hand. Thank you, Jakeem. Well, you and I are often our own worst enemy. Because God has given us every reason to have peace. Sorry about the light. I don't know it's shining off your faces. I'm going to have some fun here. But anyway, I'm going to resist. I'm going to resist. But the Bible has a lot to say about overcoming your personal fears. Okay? Because a lot of times there can be... There are big circumstances where there's nothing actually going on, but we have this, this, this sense of foreboding that something's going to happen. We're kind of one of the Texas people. Okay, something bad's going to happen. I just know it. Well, guess what? It will. It will. But you don't have to be fearful. Okay, when that thing rises up, God will give you the grace to overcome. He'll help you to handle it. It's not that things won't happen. It's not if, but when, okay? I'm getting a little ahead of myself here because this, this, is, this is important stuff. So let's just say, let's just say it this way. We've all got a problem with fear and worry to some degree, some greater than others. We know that. So we're all in search of true peace of mind and heart. We're all in search of that. So how do we get this peace that we so desperately need and God promises, Okay. Okay, so let's look at this. You and I have the key to peace through the power of prayer. Uh Uh-oh, I went too far. You saw my chicken. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. I could stop right there and say, just do it. Do not be anxious, fearful, worry about anything. 
all right? Now, we're going to talk about in a minute, uh, well, how about concern? Well, we'll talk about that. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, that's some, not occasional, every situation by prayer and petition, that's simply making requests to God, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends or passes, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now understand that the peace of God stands like a guard at your heart and your mind. An armed guard, okay? Not just one AK-47, but a bazooka and a tank and some other things that make sure you stay at peace. No matter what the circumstances. This is assuming bad circumstances here. That's why you're tempted to not have peace, okay? So there are very three important things uh, to notice here. I'm going to get these really quick, okay? Uh, To notice in this particular scripture. And this is, to me... This is the primary scripture about peace. Now, there's a lot of other scriptures. We're going to read some in a minute. But this is really really a, 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 a focal point of scripture when it comes to peace. First of all, we activate the peace switch. If you go with the illustration here. We activate the peace switch when we turn everything over to God, making our requests known to Him. In order for peace to come, we must truly turn things over, letting them go into God's hands. And when we do that, be thankful. You know, we just got done with Thanksgiving season, but I hope you're thankful all year round. There is power in being thankful. Having a grateful heart every single moment of every day. Be thankful. There's always some, there's a, a, a plaque that you've seen. I think they have it down at uh, Hobby Lobby, and I know... Uh, Uh, Jan and Kenny have at their house, you know, there's always, 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 always something to be thankful for. Always. And that'll set you free in itself. But you add prayer to that, it's it's, it's it's a double powerful thing in your life, okay? It's a matter of simply trusting God to handle whatever is worrying us at the time and tapping into the power of thanksgiving. That's one thing. Secondly, both our heart and our mind are delivered and guarded from fear when we sincerely pray. Sincerely pray and leave things with God. Thirdly, the peace that results will actually be hard to believe. That's cool. In fact, you feel so peaceful, you kind of wonder, <laughs> kind of comes back around, something must be wrong. It must be something I don't know. No, that's, that's the devil trying to get us to, to question it, okay? But that peace will pass up your understanding. You know, we won't be able to fathom it. So you and I have the key to peace through the power of prayer. Now, be constantly aware, another, another key here, be constantly aware of what you're thinking. Now, Pam and I harp on this all the time, all the time, how important it is to be careful of what you feed your brain. Be careful of what you allow into your mind, okay? Be constantly aware of what you're thinking. Your thoughts have the power to fan the fire of fear on one hand or douse its flames and feed the peace. Either way, the key is knowing the difference between genuine concern and destructive fear. I told you I'd get to this. Genuine concern, constructive fear. I know a lot of times we, we like to go around, well, I'm, I'm not afraid, I'm just concerned. All right, let's talk about it then. Uh, I'm, I'm 64 years old now, and I know the word concern. I know what the word means in a general sense, but I looked it up anyway. I just wanted to see what the, what the, what the I almost said the Bible, what the dictionary said about it. Genuine concern... There's, there were several definitions. One of them was a matter of interest or importance to someone. Okay, I can handle that. That's a good thing. A matter of interest or importance to someone. Safety of our loved ones, making sure your job is done right, uh, paying your bills on time, you know, some of those kind of things. The problem is this, people. Each concern can easily morph 
into worry or anxiety, as I found in getting the actual definition of concern. As I told you, they have several definitions, and uh, there's noun definitions, there's verb definitions, and only one of those was a matter of interest or importance to someone. The other definitions included some form of anxiety or worry. So a lot of times we'll say we're concerned, and we could be, but the chances are we're worried. And we're anxiety, but we don't want to make it sound like we're unspiritual. So we're going to throw out the concern word, okay? So I, I'm not saying we don't have genuine concerns. We do. We, we, we want our kids to, to be safe and our loved ones and all this kind of stuff, okay? That's a good thing, okay? Uh, I have a fear of jumping off tall buildings. That's a good fear. Because <laughs> gravity and I sometimes aren't friendly, okay? And you either. So uh, all I'm saying is we, we got to have some of those some of those concerns and I hate to say good fear. I'm going to say a good concern, okay? Because uh, I don't think fear, by definition, is good. Here's the definition of fear, okay? Things are out of control and are bad, dangerous, painful, or threatening. This usually comes with the idea that there's little or nothing I can do about it. Something bad is simply just going to happen, period. That's fear. Something bad it's just going to happen, and everything's going to just go out of control. Okay. It kind of reminds me of Chicken Little. Here comes the chicken. I like that. It's kind of funny. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. We all know the story about Chicken Little. Okay. Acorn fell on his head, and the stupid little chicken thought the sky was falling. Okay. Sometimes we can be stupid little chickens. Bad things happen or we get conked on the head, you know, by an experience or something and we think the sky is, sky is falling. And uh, so, but we can't, so we can't blame Chicken Little on this one, okay, because sometimes we do it too, which leads to the next one. Can you read it? The sky is falling, the sky is falling, the people are saying as they're running and the chicken says, that's my line. Sometimes... We, we, we're the ones running. We're the ones running scared. We're the ones that are having these they're, 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 uh, unreasonable fears, okay? And anything that is not of faith is, uh, uh, you know, uh, is, is fear and is wrong. And it steals away our peace, the peace that God wants us to have. When you and I permit fear to rule, this is evidence that we've allowed one or more of the following things to happen. And this is, this is, this is just from my brain, um, and I, I hope it doesn't scare anybody. <laughs> Number one, we've decided it's impossible for anything to be done. That's where these fears, un, unwarranted fears, come from. Number two, if something is to be done, we believe we're the only one who can do it. But at the same time, we feel inadequate for the task. Number three, the only outcome that is acceptable is what we think should happen. Number four, very simply, we don't trust God to handle our affairs. We don't trust God. I'm here to tell you people, when we allow fear and anxiety and insecurity to rule, number four is always the case. Always the cause. Always the cause. We simply do not trust God. Now, that's not to put a guilt trip on anybody. It's just, it's evidence. It reveals, our fears reveal our level of trust or lack thereof in God. Now, when we allow, uh, of course, as we, as we look at this, fear and faith are simply opposed to each other. They really are. They're opposed to each other. And the antidote is God's word. Trust in God and trust in God's word. As we saw in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, love that scripture, our mind comes into play big time here. See, uh, the, the, the peace of God shall guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, okay? But then, on goes the next verse, Pam quotes it all the time, and it, it comes back to our mind again, okay? Verse 8, 
Finally, brothers whatever and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Paul is wanting us to have the peace of God in our hearts. And he says, your mind is critical to this. You know, because God does his part, we do our part. It's important that you be a careful gatekeeper of what you allow into your mind and what I allow into my mind. It's very important. I usually, I'm awful careful to talk about TV, you know. Well, not really. But, but I don't want it to look like I'm against all TV. I'm certainly not against all TV, but I am against scary movies. I'm against horror movies because that gets in our mind and gets down in our spirit. And sometimes we're, we're fearful because of those memories that are in our, in our mind. And our, 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 our emotions and our mind is very tricky and it can bring those things back up, that, those fears and everything. So we have to be careful what we let in there. And maybe what we read. You know, some people get into horror novels and things like that. Or, or, okay, here we go, video games. Video games. And again, I'm not talking against all video games or anything like that. I'm just saying the violent ones. Okay, are those ones that are scary and all those kind of things. It gets into our spirit, people. And, we, well, and, and this is, although this is not a message on, on the whole message on our, on our mind, it is, a big part of it is about our mind and, and how we need to be careful of what we feed it. What you feed your brain will come out in your life. What you feed your mind will come out in your life. And it may come out in, a, in the form of fear in a form of anxiety, in a form of uh, uh, insecurity, if we're not careful. I'm getting off my soapbox now. Isaiah 26.3. Every time I read this, I think of Miss Bailey. She was an elderly lady that attended our church for many, many years, was at the very beginning of our church back 25 plus years ago, and, and uh, she quoted this verse over and over and over and over and over and over again. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. She was raised in an atmosphere of abuse and um, this, uh, this whole long story. Um, she even wrote a book about her life and she wanted to distribute it, and I read it and said, no, nah, Miss Bailey, probably not. <laughs> it's a long story. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying she, she knew what peace of God meant. And she was raised in a very, very trying situation. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because, because he trusts in you. Last point. In this world, we will always have a fight with fear. It's not if, but when. We will always have a fight with fear to some degree. Now as we grow, as we mature, when fear raises its ugly head, we'll know exactly what to do to take care of it. But he will continue to try to raise his ugly head. Fear will paralyze us if we're not careful. And it takes away our peace. Since we are humans who are not in heaven yet, we have to learn to fight for our peace. Just like the military, we have to believe that fighting for our inner peace is a worthy battle, and worthy battles cannot be ignored. It's, you know, choose your battles thing. Choose this one. Choose to fight for your peace. We must decide that it is not God's will that we will be fearful and worried and in anxiety. <laughs> we must choose to believe that if God is for us, right, who can be against us? We must absolutely believe that God desires we have peace and tranquility in our heart and our mind every day, no matter the circumstance. We must come to the place where we know that God is fighting for us because he loves us. We must know beyond all doubt God has provided everything we need to have victory over anxiety of every kind and experience his heavenly peace. 
Isaiah chapter 54, verses 16 and 17 says this. See, it is I who created the blacksmith who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for his work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. No weapon forged against you will prevail. We hear that quoted all the time. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Now, I've heard that quote, quoted it myself many, many times. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, or forged against you shall pos- prosper. Okay? Because we're gods. The weapons will come, that will be, they'll be shot at us, but they're not going to prosper. They're not going to do its effect if we've got our eyes on Jesus. Now, I want to draw your attention to something that I, I, I read uh, these uh, two verses here, 16 and 17. 16 says, and it is I, this is God talking, who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. I needed to know what that meant. God creates a destroyer. So I did some research to see what other scholars, others, what scholars were saying about it. And, and, and they, they talked about how God sometimes uses his, even his enemies to bring victory and all this kind of, and it's all true, all true. And I saw one after the other kind of allude to that kind of a thing. God, you know, um, he didn't create Satan, but he did create Lucifer as a, as a great angel, okay? But the angel fell, okay? So in that sense, created that, you know, that, those kind of things, okay? So, but there was something down inside me that said there's more. There's more to this. So I kept, I kept doing research. I said, I wonder if the destroyer could be a good angel. Because you remember when the, God sent a destroying angel, um, you know, when the Passover was happening and the death of the firstborn back in Exodus, he sent a destroying angel around to kill all those that didn't have the blood over the door, door frame, okay? The blood of the lamb protected those that had the blood. Those who didn't have the blood, a destroying angel destroyed them. So I knew that, so I said... Could that be a possibility? I finally came across a Jewish commentator. And he was giving his interpretation of that, and that's exactly what he said. Okay, now I'm not saying it's not both. It's probably both. It could be both. I don't know. All I'm saying is, I believe with all my heart, I, 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 it says this, and it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. God wants to destroy your fear. He wants to destroy your fear. God, when it comes to his enemies, God doesn't play games. He's going to wipe them out. He's going to destroy them, and he wants us to have that attitude too. If you've got fear in your life, you need to buck it up, and you need to say, I'm not going to stand for this anymore. God, I need your destroying angel to come. I need to destroy, let's say, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's the most powerful force in the universe because it's God himself, and we can, we can pray, and that's why we can overcome every fear we have because that's a destroyer when it comes to God's enemies. You hear what I'm saying? It gives us the power. He gives us the power to live right and to, to have victory. Well, you can't have victory without battle. We talk about victory all the time. We're, we're people of victory. But that assumes there's a battle. So let's let God wreak havoc with your fears, with your insecurities and your worry and your doubt. That's what we're talking about here. God will destroy that which is opposed to him, his purposes, and his people. His people. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Don't let a single thought wreak havoc. But you send a destroyer to wreak havoc on that sinful thought, on that fearful thought, on that worry. 
See, that's, that's what God has given us the power to overcome. We take captive every thought in the name of Jesus. If it's a thought that is, that is not in line with God's word or, or is not, does not bring peace, is against peace, then we, we have the right and the power and the authority to take that thought captive and to send it to the pit of hell. But folks, it takes practice. Thoughts are tricky. They're really tricky. Sneak up on us, and we think things, all of a sudden, something jumps in our brains, and where did that come from? Everybody ever had that experience? Where did that come from? Take that thought captive. Cast it out. Start praising the Lord. Start praying. Start quoting Scripture. That's how you take it captive. You replace it with something else. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Power, love, sound mind. He has not given us a spirit of fear. Romans 14, 7. There's Romans 14, Romans 15, and Romans 16. Listen quick. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow get the wording here you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit Romans 16 verse 20 the god of peace will soon crush satan under your feet that sounds like wreaking havoc to me the god of peace will soon crush satan under your feet In the end, it's about him fighting the battle. Amplified version, John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world, you have tribulation. Not if... But when you will have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. (laughs) Okay, be filled with joy. We're going to be talking about that next week, by the way. The scripture might possibly come up next week. Be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory abiding. It's not a temporary thing. It's a permanent thing. Permanent. Are you ready to get off the fear train? I'm going to show you a picture. What what jumped into my head when when that term came into my head was, it's time to get off the fear train. And as soon as I thought that, what came to my mind was an image of the um, World War II Nazi prison trains. The prisoners, the Jews, were loaded up into trains like cattle and all that. And I found many, 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 many pictures about it. And I didn't, they were pretty graphic, very graphic. But I chose one, I think, will, will get the point across because this is how we feel a lot of times in our of course, these are all women. Of course, the, the, the Nazis took men and women, but this is a car, a train car full of women. Got barbed wire over the windows and everything. They couldn't get out and everything. Sometimes that's how fear feels. We feel trapped. We feel like there's no way out of this thing. I, I don't have any hope. And if I try to get out, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. So we just sit there paralyzed in our fear. Well, I want to tell you, World War II came to an end. The Allies come in. They set the people free. Jesus is your ally. And he comes in on the wings of a snow-white dove, and he sets you free. You don't have to be fearful anymore. You can be set free. I can't imagine. I have tried my best to try to 
Think of what it would have been like to be a Jew that was in the Nazi concentration camps or whatever, and, and to be one of the ones near the end when the allies come in and they got to be freed. What would that feel like? What kind of emotions would go through you feeling that kind of thing when you thought for sure you were going to die? You knew that was in the cards for you, but you got set free. You got set free, and you see the friendly air, aircraft flying overhead, and, and then ground troops coming in, opening the doors, and you get to walk out. Jakeem, I need you again. Okay, There's something else in his box that came. I don't know if you noticed before. Did you notice it before? Yeah. Okay, something else in his box. We overcome our own fears. Go ahead and pick it up. Show everybody. We sang that this morning. We're going to sing it again in just a few minutes. Fear is a liar. Do not believe your fears. When you believe our fears, we're, we're listening to hell speak to us. We're listening to Satan. We're listening to some demon from the pit of hell whisper in our ears something that's not true. You and I are to believe the truth, not to believe the lies. You can overcome every single fear, I'm here to tell you. And if you're captivated with fear today, you can be set free today and be on the road to being set free. So you don't have, to, don't have to be in bondage anymore, trapped. Oh, you may have a wrestling match, but you'll win every time. Because God has given you the, the power to overcome. First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares or fears, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns. Notice concerns is in there. Once and for all on him, for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. See, when we get afraid, we think we're all by ourselves. That's why one of the definitions I put, we feel like we're, we're fighting all by ourselves, but we don't have any power to do anything to fight, to win. We well, got to remember Jesus is with us. He doesn't the scripture says he watches over you very carefully. Of course, this is the amplified version. And then last but not least, this is Jesus. Our Savior, the lover of our soul, says this, peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Folks, it's time to be truly set free by Jesus, the only son of the living God who came disguised as in a human baby born in a manger, in a, but, but, but was really the prince of peace. Isaiah 9, 6. He's really the Prince of Peace. Come born in a manger. Today, your search for peace can be over. Peace of heart and peace of mind, it does not depend on your circumstances. If you're ready to commit it all to the Prince of Peace by giving him full access right now and on a daily basis, you will have peace. Thank you, Jakeem. Appreciate it. And your reward for helping. That's yours, brother. Please stand. The reason the Bible talks so much about peace is because God knows we need it so much. He wants you to be peaceful. He wants you to be able to enjoy life no matter what's going on around you. 
And yes, we all have various responsibilities and pressures and certain stresses that come along with our life or jobs or school or wherever we're at. But just because those battles come up doesn't mean we have to succumb because you've got the power and authority to overcome in the name of Jesus. I think we've gotten that point across. The last scripture we read, Jesus is our overcomer. Please bow your head and close your eyes. If you're here today and you're losing your war against peace, one reason might be, I mean, against, against the fear and you don't have your peace. It may be because you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. That may be a very good possibility. And if you're here today and you have, as far as you can recall, you have never committed your life to Christ, never surrendered to Him fully, today's the day. That's the first and most important step you can take to overcoming fear and having peace in your life like you've never experienced before and you can't even explain. For the rest of us, you may have fears that you need to overcome. But first, let's take care of the most important business at hand, that you need to have Jesus. If you're here today and you've never surrendered to Jesus fully, put your hand up. We'll want to pray with you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You don't know Jesus, or you're not sure if you do. If you've got some doubts, whether you're in right relationship with Jesus. Okay, for the rest of us, if you're here today, every head bowed, every every eye closed, and you're and you, 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 have a, you have some fears that you're wrestling with or maybe a big fear that you're wrestling with and you want to be healed and delivered and you want to start today and you're going to commit today to not letting it bother you anymore, put your hand up. We're going to pray for you. Put your hand up. Go ahead. I see several hands. Go ahead. We're among friends here. You're, you're fighting a battle with fear. Okay, you can put your hands down. I want us to all pray this prayer together. Okay, not only in support of those who raise their hands, but for our own well-being, for our own strength and purpose. Father God, I surrender to you right now. Everything that I am, I acknowledge that I wrestle with fear, sometimes insecurity, and worry and anxiety sometimes. And Lord, I'm, I'm done with it. I don't, want to, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to live for you, free from worry, free from anxiety, free from insecurity, being victorious with peace. So right here and now, I commit all my fears to you. I turn them over to you, and I want you to wreak havoc with them. Destroy them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I want your peace. And I'm going to promise to thank peace, to turn things over to you. When that fearful thought comes in, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to walk in victory from here on out. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing. Let's sing. Fear is a liar. Don't ever forget it. Fear is a liar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let your fire fall, your love is all I need. Thank you, Jesus. Let your fire fall, your love is all I need. Thank you, Jesus. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Fear is a liar. He'll take your breath, stop you. Bye.
Thank you, Jesus. He is the liar. That's a profession of faith, but I want to close with Scripture. Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. In the name of Jesus, go victoriously. That's close. <laughs> go and change the world. Go and change the world. Go and change the world for Jesus. Change the world. Go and change.